Hi guys, so welcome to another tutorial. In this case, we're going to be learning how to make cool smoke simulations with action follower. So stay tuned and watch the full tutorial. Guys, do you want to join a really nice server? We have tons of different channels. We have effects, modeling, loop dev, compositing. We will have resources for every type of discipline. So hop in and have fun. I also have a Patreon page where you can support me. I have every single file, I have polls, I have even some tools, guidance. So if you are interested, you may have a look. Thank you. Hi guys, so welcome again to this new project. In this case, we are using a real scenario for a real client. So thank you, Santiago, for letting me use this project file. So. To begin with, I have been given this camera and this teapot, or at least this part of the teapot. The scale from which it was imported was really big, so I downscaled it to 0.1. It was imported from Maya. This should have been to set to 0 1, but I really don't care because I wanted to have some really big scale like simulation in this case. So you don't always need to have a real one to one representation. So this is the teapot, it's basically an alembic with a convert and a subdivide, nothing else. And on this uh, object is just um, a camera with a background image, which is this one. Then we dived in, importing of course our teapot geometry into a new geometry object context. So I basically decided to extrude these guys out a little bit. I really don't care about this. Uh, things here because they add a little bit of um, disturbance to the overall simulation but they really wanted to have a bigger um, a bigger kind of a space here for what? for the volume representation which will become our collider so I'm going to show you this is remember uh, low res right now because I want to show you in real time what's going on I want to show you what happens this is action solver speed and I am recording, so I am using my GPU right now. This is like, it's awesome. It's literally awesome. It's really fast to iterate and I'm not even using a power bag to make it nicer. If you use a, a cache node, we can cache into RAM this. It would flicker from time to time. But as you can see, this is really, really nice. So what's going on here? On the left input, this is going to be everything that is our uh, custom uh, fields, like as we used to work with Pyro before, right? With our smoke and Pyro solvers. So here will be will be going the restorations, the colliders, etc. But on the right side, we will have our soul shapes. So let's go one by one and see what is going on. Firstly, I'm going to use this axiom source shape which is the main source and all i'm doing is translating this cute little shape with some temperature and some density and i'm using a deformation noise with these settings i just clicked it the deformation noise is going to deform the overall shape of the source the velocity noise is going to do the same but with the velocities and the force is actually going to be selected on direction. Why I chose direction? Because I wanted to have a direction from the center of this sphere onwards there. And of course, the velocity noise is going to be modifying this a little bit more. The direction is basically saying, hey, go x11 units and up one unit. Remember that we have a temperature, so it's going to rise up naturally. Secondly, I went into the simulation tab and I clicked on the setting, the disturbance 3, 1, uh, the turbulence 1 and the confinement. If I decide, I'm going to take a screenshot of this so I don't forget. If I decide to turn all this off, this is how it's going to look. A simple simulation, which is looking very nice, in my opinion. I really like this. But as you can see, this is very slow. So secondly, I decide to add another source which is a pyramid influence. Influences are fields that basically modify the ongoing simulation. <coughs> I decided to have a secondary injection of velocity with a magnitude of negative 24, so it's going instead of going 
that way is going to go on the opposite way basically on the opposite y direction in this case so this is the uh, direction 2 up and 0.3 vertically so it's basically po pointing there and I have a little velocity noise with these settings and that's about it with a pressure of 1 the pressure is the same or is very similar to the divergence the divergence is basically how compressed or not uh, you have a, a simulation so if you press play now this cone is affecting the overall situation but as you can see if I stop this this is going way out of bounds way out of bounds I don't need this simulation so I decided to add a camera frustum here the camera frustum as you can see if I select the camera and I add an overscan of 0.1 we'll have something like so this is basically everywhere we can have a simulation in this case it's very useful because it will automatically delete everything that goes outside so now you have a really fast simulation but we need more so I want to add a little bit of a little bit of pressure so we can make it expand as you can see here nearby this section with a temperature of 0.4 so it rises a little bit more you can have a deformation noise so we can deform everywhere inside this field we can deform the actual smoke and we can add some velocity so look at what's going to happen it automatically goes up a little bit and deforms it it's kind of strange how it works but it's very nice to have a like a more organic shape so let's hop into the action solver itself remember that we had uh, some um, solvers i mean some modifiers like the buoyancy the buoyancy if i disable it basically as any other solver it's just going to stop the the temperature from doing any work in this case it's just the velocity which is affecting if i make this go up and press reset simulation i'm going to leave it for a while loading it's going to make everything rise up a little bit more if i add disturbance one we will have the disturbance section which this block size usually the block size in this case is referred to the main resolution i chose this one with three sub steps and i'm using cuda which is the new um the new build basically which is faster at least in my scenario is faster it depends on the cpu on the gpu sorry and basically i decided to add a velocity speed uh, ramp fill which i ramped by this gradient these are as the usual control fields in the power solver so i decided to give it a try and let's see what happens and it's already much much better as you can see it's like our high frequency uh, velocity field i mean uh, velocity the disturbance going on or working uh, on the edges of the smoke where it's faster so let's add another disturbance in this case with an amplitude of which is one or scale of one uh, in this case the block size is going to be multiplied by eight so i'm going to add some low frequency um the formations with the same velocity speed but in this case from zero to three and everything that's below this threshold is going to be clamped so as you can see it's adding a little bit of lower frequency uh, disturbance but i also want to have some turbulence the turbulence is going to have some kind of swirls here and there we can of course turn all of these off and see how it looks one layer by one so this is kind of what i'm looking for of course i could use a, an off on the field and we can also ex exaggerate this a little bit more so we can see it's very very subtle if i add a 15 it should probably work once i do this reset simulation and we can see the difference here of course i don't want to have so much turbulence so a value of one as it was before is okay and the gas vortex confinement is going to allow me to go or shape inside on, on its own right the more resolution the more detail we are going to get so i'm going to show you how it looks on high resolution so let's turn everything on as we had before uh, the diffusion is how fluffy the smoke is going to get over time and the dissipation is of course the dissipation i didn't change anything else apart from this yeah nothing else is changed it's basically most of it from from uh, from fab fabric factory i don't know how to say it and we had to take a look at this this is very important when you use action solver 
even if I am not visualizing, for example, I'm visualizing this null, once we have the action solver turned on, we will have dedicated GPU plugged into it. So look what happens to the RAM after I disable this node. It instantly goes back. Remember to also reset the simulation, just to see some, sometimes we can see a little bump. And remember, if you want to lower it even more, you can go into animation editor and it's going to flash even a little bit more. In some cases, it's more drastic. I believe this GPU usage is because I am recording right now as we speak. So these are the things we got to keep in mind. Also, this cache is not necessary. This will go straight into the RAM. And in this case, we have a time shift. This is basically because I wanted to have a pre-roll. A pre-roll is basically everything that starts before the actual shot. So if I go back into here, I activate this folder and I just click here, it will start being simulated, which is, of course, what I'm looking for. Well, so this is a great start. So if we dive in into this BDB converter, and as I explained in many other of my videos, it's just a BDB convert with a BDB vector merge, so we can have the velocities, or if we have a, a vector, a flip vector, we can um, basically turn three uh, floats into a vector, sorry, and a resample for uh, only the velocity to box scale those two. So I'm basically exporting a low res uh, definition of the velocity with a primitive of volume set to 16 uh, bit float. All of this is already in some way or another sorted here in the output. As you can see, the velocity is one half. This is 16 bits. We empty the, the activated boxes, which are empty. But this is all handled on its own. But I, as I'm used to my old workflow, I usually add this right after a simulation. Uh, so what I'm doing here is to add a point, if we can see it right inside the, the teapot, and I'm dive into this lovely volume bop. So this is how it looks with the pyro bag. I just added a density of scale of 5, 1.81 of the shadow density. That's about it. But look at how it looks with and without. This is without, this one is with. What I'm doing here is basically importing the points of the second input, which is basically this one, and I'm grabbing the P position and I'm subtracting this position by this position. I'm uh, determining the length of this value and I'm fitting this from 0 to 2, basically two units away. Uh, and then what I'm doing is to do a ramp and multiply the density by this ramp. If you go outside, this is the ramp. And what we can do with this is to control how low the the smoke is near this point this is because if we want to render like a like the smoke condensing after being ejected from the teapot this is how we want to do it you can also do this of course in render time and the whole simulation let me just before visualizing this turn this off so we can empty some of the ram i'm going to turn the high resolution version as you can see this picked again and this is how it looks i believe it looks awesome and even in render time it will look even better so that's about it there's nothing else this solver i highly recommend you to download the trial version for your own in my scenario where i work every day with houdini with different clients that usually ask pyro or smoke or whatever this improved my workflow at least 20 times i am not even kidding so give it a try the files will be free to download for this case in my patreon uh, so link down below again guys i hope that you enjoyed the tutorial please remember that you can ask every single question down in the comments or in my discord channel and you will be having this product or this zoom file for free in the link down below on my patreon